Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're gonna to talk about a very important topic about vitamin D, or when not to take vitamin D. Oftentimes you get blanket statements of taking high doses of vitamin D to help viral replication or immune system support and so forth. However, I'm always the proponent of checking your vitamin D levels to make sure you're taking the right dosages. So let's get into the facts of why not to take high doses of vitamin D or when to be careful when taking vitamin D. So let's get right into it. When not to take vitamin D. So let's go into some of the lab markers, right? Your typical lab marker is 25 hydroxy vitamin D. And in the lab, it will say 30 to 100 nanograms per uh, milliliter and that is measuring the inactive form of vitamin D. Now the inactive form uh, in excess will store in your fat tissues. 125 hydroxy vitamin D, the range is 19.9 to 79.3 picograms per milliliter, and that is the active form of vitamin D. And oftentimes this form is not checked on the blood work. So the vitamin D council says deficiency is zero to 40 nanograms. Sufficient level is 40 to 80. And high normal is 80 to 100, okay? So this is measuring 25 hydroxy vitamin D. Now, when you get sun exposure, it triggers uh, production of vitamin D. Oral consumption, right? Uh, of vitamin D, typically D2 or D3. So if you impact the skin, the vitamin D will go to the liver, there's a hydroxylation process, and then it goes to the kidney, there's another hydroxylation process, and the kidney is what produces 125 hydroxy vitamin D, or the active form of vitamin D. So, Increased vitamin D levels helps to reduce the risk of certain cancers, right? Deficient vitamin D increases the risk for autoimmune disease and is associated with hypertension and cardiovascular disease. So it's got a cardiovascular effect. It also has an immune modulating effect with autoimmune disease. Contributing factors for deficiencies in vitamin D. One is age. We're not able to convert your vitamin D or there's dysfunction in the kidney uh, and the liver where you're not producing enough of the active forms of vitamin D. Less sun exposure. Intake where you're not taking in enough vitamin D. The latitude. So if you live near the equator versus in the northeast, you're going to have different sun exposures. Complexion. So darker skinned people will tend to have uh, less production of vitamin D. That can be somewhat controversial. Uh, it's oftentimes the cholesterol in the skin that will help uh, production of vitamin D. Malabsorption syndromes, gut issues, Crohn's disease, ir uh, irritable bowel, inflammatory bowel disease, uh, overuse of um, uh, antacids. Liver and kidney disease, because the hydroxylation process occurs through the liver and kidney uh, for the production of active vitamin D. So when you have kidney disease, uh, it can be problematic. One clinical pearl is if you have kidney disease and your GFR is very low, uh, vitamin D uh, may not be uh, efficient, the D2 or D3. You might have to take the active form of vitamin D, which is calcitrol, if you have kidney disease. Also gallbladder function. So vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin, therefore, you need proper gallbladder function in order to absorb fat soluble vitamins, okay? So let's get into the facts of why or when not to take extra vitamin D, okay? So, let me get this here. So when not to take vitamin D. So when you have a healthy individual who comes into the office, right? and we take that healthy individual and go, we're gonna check your vitamin D level. Their vitamin D level might be low, but their active form is normal. So the 125 hydroxy vitamin D is normal. So that's a healthy population. 
So 25 hydroxy vitamin D is very important for Im promoting immune regulation or immune modulation, right? It's kind of the referee that helps uh, the immune system. 25 hydroxy vitamin D or the active form of vitamin D activates the inflammatory response, right? It can actually increase the inflammatory response because you're increasing the immune response and T cell response. Okay? Now, when you have an unhealthy individual who comes into the office or an inflamed patient who comes into the office, they might have low vitamin D, but they may have an elevated level of the active form of 125 hydroxy vitamin D. And this can be, occur because this patient might be inflamed and they're converting the inactive form to active forms at high levels to have the immune response or inflammatory response. So if you take a healthy individual, unhealthy individual here, they may have a vitamin D receptor problem or a issue with uh, receiving the vitamin D at the cells. This can occur with people who have autoimmune disease, right? These are genetic problems or polymorphisms where the vitamin D receptor is not working correctly. So sometimes you're taking a lot of vitamin D to overcome this. Another one is inflammation. The inflammatory response will suck up the inactive vitamin D, convert it to the active form to help the inflammatory response. Also with autoimmune disease, you might see this. And definitely with infections or stealth infections, even when your normal CRP or ESR is within range, right? It's not uh, elevated, but uh, you can have an issue with the vitamin D. So here's the clinical pearl, right? If you have an unhealthy individual and they have low vitamin D, that's what we checked for, let's say, and you give them 10,000 units, 15,000 units, 20,000 units of vitamin D. And the vitamin D level here does not go up. Then you need to check for the active form of 125 hydroxy vitamin D. So you're supplementing really hard right here, but it moves very minimally or it doesn't move at all or actually drops then you need to check for the active form of vitamin D and oftentimes what you'll find is an elevated active vitamin D. Uh, the reason is it's trying to have that inflammatory response, right? It's trying to fight off the infection. However, sometimes it can promote inflammatory responses. So that, that's where you need to be careful. If you're supplementing a lot here, it doesn't go up, it's still low, or actually drops, you need to check the active form of vitamin D. Those are the patients when you do not want to give them vitamin D, right? You have to go find the underlying mechanism of why they have elevated uh, 125-hydroxy vitamin D. You have to find the inflammatory process. You have to find the autoimmune disease. You have to find the infection, right, in order to correct that problem where it's over converting to the active form of vitamin D. So those are the patients when you have to be careful not to take too, many too much vitamin D, and you have to be careful not to perpetuate the inflammatory response. Now, what are some safe levels of taking vitamin D? 2,000 to 5,000 international units of D3 is what I recommend. You need to monitor if you're taking over 5,000 international units of vitamin D. If you're taking high levels at 10,000 and 15,000, and this does not really go up, right? The 25 hydroxy vitamin D does not go up. It'll get, you have to check for the active form of vitamin D, the 125 hydroxy, because it, it can perpetuate the uh, inflammatory response. This is a very important lecture because oftentimes um, there are blanket statements from, you know, commenters on, on, on YouTube videos about vitamin D and saying, oh, I should take, you know, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 units of vitamin D, and my vitamin D is only 50, right? It's not going up. So you have to understand the underlying mechanisms of why that can occur, 
and when not to take vitamin D, or you have to be monitored by someone who understands what's going on uh, to keep you at a safe level. I know there are cofactors that you should take with vitamin D. Obviously, you have to take uh, magnesium, K2, and so forth. But the purpose of this lecture is to show you that it's not a, a blanket statement that people should make when you take vitamin D of taking you know, 10,000, 20,000 units per day. All right? It's very important to understand the physiology and when something is not working is to go deeper and figure out the underlying mechanisms of why this might occur. All right? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.